Eddie Howe is reportedly the FA's favoured candidate for the England job. Now, we'll come on to other candidates in a minute. I, that's what some people are reporting. I think I would say he's their favoured English candidate. Sure, right. Um, but again, that, that kind of gives away what I'm thinking. Um, but <laughs> last week, he did reaffirm his loyalty to Newcastle. Although, mm. Pete Donaldson, he did say, for me, as long as I'm happy and feel supported and feel free to do the work that I love to do at Newcastle, I'll be happy. And I am yeah. very happy. Right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, it's kind of... Um, someone's um, selling a book and he's happened to have fallen uh, into his lap an amazing quote from Eddie Howe talking about how much he wants to be the yeah. England boss at the same time mm. as England looking for a new manager. Um, obviously, he's lost a couple of really important allies uh, in the boardroom um, over, over the summer uh, period. Um, and to be honest, I think from the outside looking in, Newcastle United are still quite a chaotic club. Um, they have um, been in a situation where they've had to sell two really promising um, footballers to um, satisfy fair play, a situation that they've known has been on the table for about two and a half years. Um, and th they managed to get it done right on the final day. Um, proper like Indiana Jones's hat kind of like <laughs> last minute stuff. Um, and also they've had to sit, presumably take a reduced fee for Dan Ashworth, uh, director of football uh, in Newcastle, obviously now um, from gardening leave heading to Manchester United. So he's going to have a full transfer window. Um, you're effectively transfer um, strengthening your, you know, a really near rival in that situation. So it, it, it's going to be interesting to see what Eddie can get out of that uh, squad at this moment in time. And he might sort of think that, you know, this is a really good um, position for me to be in. This is a really good time for me to jump to England. And I, I could see it happening, to be honest, because, as, as discussed, Newcastle just can't seem to spend much money at the moment, and, and they, they really need to. Yeah, his yeah. reputation is high at the moment, and I can't really see... I can't see it's been very likely that he would do so badly at Newcastle his, his reputation mm. would take a big nosedive but you never know do you One, uh, another campaign like the last campaign which is I suppose very possible given some of the issues you just mentioned there Pete and also a new kind of hierarchy to be working under and alongside given how much mm. control he likes there's no guarantee he's going to have that as well it would be a smart time to do it wouldn't it Dougie Friedman turned Newcastle United down that's what's mm. position we're in behind the dugout. So, uh, you know, it, it, it may not be that favourable a place to work at the moment. Well, yeah, I mean, how did... You know, there were reports that when he met the the new people and so on, that they were talking about last season and saying, OK, you had a lot of injuries, but, like, you're going to get a lot of injuries next season as well. Like, what, you know, mm. the, the, you know, Brass, Andy Brassel always talks about the training methods of how, like, he goes, he goes full pelt. And some mm. are suggesting, well, does that contribute to... Injuries. Mm. I mean, you remember Arsenal, Jim, back in the day where they seem to get a lot of injuries in training. Yeah. And it's like, well, hang on, this, this can't be a coincidence. So Howe was there kind of defending his position slightly. So with this England stuff that, that comes along with Southgate stepping down and Howe being a, uh, the leading English candidate, that's, that's what he is, there's no doubt about that. Um, is he using it as leverage? Or is he umming and ahhing? I, 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 you know... Hard to tell. It isn't is it? Hard, hard to tell. I mean, he'll, he'll ha of course, he'll be considering it. Surely, there, there, there is no. It's surely, there is no job. reality where he just dismisses it out of hand. Well, exactly. So, mm. so I said about how recently on the pod I said, you know, in the next couple of years, w w could he win the league with Newcastle? It's very unlikely. Could he win a trophy? Mm. Yeah, maybe, and that would be huge for him. It would be huge for Newcastle. Of course, it's been a long, long time. Um, but it's not stupid to think that, that England could be challenging for the World Cup in two years' time, right? I know it would battle yeah. in the heat of North America and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, but any manager who would fancy the England job one day, and let's be honest, any English manager would, and then a few foreign managers would as well, they'd be looking at that England team thinking, well, I could do a better job than that, or, or I could certainly, uh, this is what I would do with those players. Yeah. And, and I, you know... It a, a shot at the World Cup or, or at the Euros in four years' time where it will be held in the UK and Ireland, immortality is up for grabs. Yeah. Do you not think that, like, um, Eddie Howe, his whole kind of managerial style is a little bit Gareth Southgate? It is a bit tournamenty. It's not... It, 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 he may have the game plan of, you know, um, a lot of press um, and, you know, hitting teams on the break. And certainly that's how it used to sort of set up. But I think um, with his kind of, like, inspirational... Mm. 
kind of I always say live laugh love because it's kind of <laughs> the vibe I get from him yeah. and Tyndall. Um oh, Tyndall. I do get the sense that Tyndall Tyndall in the dugout and he does the loving. As, <laughs> yeah. do, do you not think that his kind of style of kind of inspirational kind of like slogan speak management does have diminishing returns when senior footballers who you know say play their trade in the Brazilian uh, national team um, <laughs> have probably seen slightly better managers or different managerial styles um, whereas Eddie Howes I think that, that kind of stuff does only works two or three seasons and then it starts to gas out a little bit so it probably is a really natural yeah. point for him yeah. to divert from, from Newcastle I mean, I'm not saying I want it to happen I think I, I think he should stay and I want you'd to want stay, him to stay presumably I could see yeah. it happening yeah, what, what if though Peter he was to go and the reports were that Mauricio Pochettino comes in one of Poch's major problems was that he didn't have full control of the club at Chelsea and also all of his senior players got injured. So in that sense, he is also a perfect fit in Newcastle United. He'll probably have about as good a time as he had at Chelsea. But uh, True. I mean, he is, he's is—he's been mentioned around the England job, Jim, Pochettino. Obviously, how yeah, right. is the English... Um, the leading English candidate, as I say, Pochettino's mentioned as well. I mean, going back to Eddie Howell in, in England, it, he does fit that kind of mould that we've seen yeah. Yeah, recently, I, as does Graham Potter. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, the sort of the live, laugh, love kind of vibe that Pete is talking about is not <laughs> too far away from the LinkedIn vibe that Gareth Southgate has been like <laughs> peddling for the last eight years. So I think yeah. there's, there's, there is an opportunity for consistency there, especially because Eddie Howe is such a sort of details-oriented guy. I read something today saying that when he was at Bournemouth, he used to proofread the programme. Like, I mean, there's, there's right. an unnecessarily... Uh, there's an unnecessary level of involvement there, but you, you do sometimes wonder about <laughs> how managers will, will move from club football into international football and how they will fill their time and if they'll still be able to mm. kind of um, play their game with the limited time they have with the players. But he didn't have to that, write the horoscopes for the local rag, though. That was a bit too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although, I mean... Mystic Ed. You, it's funny you say that because in, in one of the quotes that's doing the round about, rounds about, from this book about him you know, talking about wanting to manage England one day, he said, mm. I'm quite laid back about it because I'm a believer that what will be will be if it's meant to happen for me it will if not it won't and i don't love the idea of that it, deep into a tournament and you need a goal it's a bit noel edmonds isn't it yeah. I, do you know i Just thought noel edmonds, ask the universe i'll manifest yeah. the goal can you put a, can you put another striker on though Although, Feels like, you're criticizing noel edmonds there and i understand yes. why but if england were to win you know with a house party would be at jim yeah uri geller's house good point oh yeah that's true well i think i think i think how I think would be good, although when you talk about the high pressing, Peter, you're absolutely right. Let's be clear. England couldn't do high pressing in Germany this summer. As I say, in two years' time in North America, three o'clock kickoff in Orlando, humidity's at 85%. Right, boys, remember, up and at them. You know, it's yeah. not going to happen. Oh, yeah. who knows what the weather's going to be like in two oh, years' yeah. time, though, Marcus. Come on. Well, it's, global. it's only going to get warmer. I mean, it's going to be water polo by the time we do Florida <laughs> in two years. Come on. Um, yeah. Well, and it, yeah, and maybe there, there could be a Mexico City, so uh, you'd have altitude mm. to deal with. It's, it's, all, yeah. it's all fun and games. So, Eddie Howe, um, FA are clearly interested in him, um, yeah. and he's thinking about that. He, he'll be very aware. Uh, uh, Graham Potter's another one who was asked uh, recently. He gave that, you know, politician-type answer. Oh, well, I just want to say Gareth Southgate. No one ever goes bollocks, not interested. Even even Ange no. Postacoglu, when he was asked about it. Because I, I don't think that's a ridiculous shout to suggest he might be interested. Um, he was, ah, oh, no, I'm, I'm happy here. I, I've not heard anybody. Oh, da, 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 da. Um, they, they all play <laughs> it down, don't they? Yeah. Um, and to be fair to Graham Potter, I understand that you could barely hear him over the sound of uh, coins in his big vault. Yes. He's <laughs> on like a... God awful amount of money everywhere. Yeah, he's still, still getting, getting 200 grand out. a week from Chelsea, isn't he, to clarify <laughs> that? In case you missed yeah. that. It, it may, left over a year ago. Maybe, uh, maybe Potter's thinking to himself, yeah, I wouldn't mind that, but my goodness, I've got a good lifestyle at the yeah. moment. <laughs> he's <laughs> sort of forgotten he's not a lottery winner, right? Yeah. He's putting his feet up, <laughs> travelling around, loving life. Yeah, so, so, so there could be that. I mean, the FA, of course, have put out a public job advert on their website for the, for the, for the head coach. for the England Again, men's very men's LinkedIn. Team. Very yeah. LinkedIn. It says, lead and develop the England senior men's team to win a major tournament and be consistently ranked as one of the top teams in the world. I mean, you kind of already... We already get that, don't we? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, 2nd of August is when the closing date for applications is. Um, J.D. Vance's birthday. Lovely. Is that right? Let's, why let's do you know celebrate. that off yeah, the top of your head? I have my reasons. 
And we don't want to know them. I um, just think he's a stand-up guy. Yeah. Well, Harry Redknapp said the search for a New England manager should just be a two-horse race between Steven Gerrard and Frank <laughs> like, I, 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 I can't you believe can't that you're not making that up. I didn't, up. Even, I didn't <laughs> even hear what you said there because you couldn't bring yourself to say the full sentence. <laughs> say it again. All right. Say it again. I'm not making this up. Harry, Harry Redknapp right. said the search... Yeah. For a New England manager, England men's senior team. Yeah. Just to, uh-huh. the, t- the, the 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 brief is to lead and develop the team and win a major tournament, right? That's the brief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah, tours yeah. race between Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard. He said either of them could do the job standing on their head. I think right. what's happened here yeah. is that Harry Redknapp's enjoying his retirement. We know he yeah. lives down in Sandbanks, lovely part of the world. Yeah. He's, he's not keeping up, is no, he? No, this is what I think. He's, he probably still records Match of the Day on TiVo <laughs> or something like it. <laughs> to him, Where's he's a little England? bit behind. He hasn't yeah. caught up with yeah. stuff. But mm. there are probably about six years worth of unwatched episodes of Match of the Day yeah. on that yeah. TiVo. And that's the closest he's come to keeping up with what's actually and he going on. And he <sighs> doesn't, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't want to... Sort of, he feels like he won't be able to follow it if he starts to watch this week. I, I don't think... So he has to watch them all in order. I think he, he probably just he's he's flicked on, and Frank Lampard has kept Everton up, and they're all on the pitch celebrating. And he's just assumed, bloody hell, Frank's won the league with Everton. That's amazing. Surely England beckons. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I mean, you don't want a foot race between Steven Gerrard and, and a Chelsea player. No, you don't. <laughs> I mean, and, we've seen that go wrong and, before. And we joked about this the other day. We're duty bound to do it again. Why don't they both manage when one's giving tactics, the other one's just sitting yeah. in the dugout? Okay, then sure. they switch. But uh, I actually think. That I think Frank Lampard would be cut out for international management. Not the England job at the moment, but I, you keep saying that. I, honestly, saying no, this, but I, I don't. No one's given me a good reason why. Because he, um, I think that he can inspire players, and I think his man management isn't too bad from what we've heard. Right. But I think, and, and also as well, <laughs> like being totally well, Frank, international management demands less of you in terms of um, the quality of coaching. Right. So, so yeah. I, I, that's so, that's not necessarily okay. a dig. But it, I, I, I think. But surely you could find people who are better in every yeah. sphere of what yeah, but, they do. But they're, but, but they're managing in the Premier League. Or, or, but let's or, look or, at the good. moment we're in, though, Marcus. We're, we're, we're yes, coming of off course. the back of a manager who, was, you, who has just doing? got us to two consecutive finals in, in the European Championships. Like, yeah. the level has raised. You know, yes, whatever the, you think the, of Southgate and, the, and the, the, the manner of it and his, yes. his tactical limitations or whatnot, the level has absolutely raised beyond, mm. with all due respect, Frank Lampard. It has. It just it has. has. I think. Frank, get him in the England under twenty ones when that job's available, and we'll see where we go. So this is this is where the FA's head or heads are at. Um, I honestly think what we how this will play out is Lee Carsley will take the UEFA Nations League campaign. Yeah. World Cup qualification starts in March. I think the groups are drawn in December. Now, unfortunately for England, due to their piss poor performance in the Nations League last time round. See, it does matter for something. People mock that thing. It mm. does matter for something. England, I don't believe, will be a seeded team in the in the in the groups for the for the qualification of the World Cup. So they could be drawn with Germany or Spain, something like that, and only the top one goes through automatically. So it, it will be an important campaign. It's not, you know, because normally England, you just think, yeah, fine, they'll, they'll be okay. And the, the next best team is, say, a Poland or a Hungary or, so, or something like that. Anyway, I'm getting off track. I honestly think Carsley will go in for the Nations League unless they can get Howe away, but I don't think they will. And I honestly think that they're looking at Guardiola because I think Guardiola, <laughs> I think it is more realistic than you might believe. I think Jurgen mm. Klopp is clearly not interested. He's just moved to Mallorca. He's taken up paddle. He's having a lovely old time. Guardiola, I think his arm is there for the for the twisting. You've taken up crack, Marcus. I, I, well, this kind of chat. I think his arm is there for the twisting because I think this. The, people are saying this will probably be his last season at Man City, right? Are you laughing away? Yeah. No, I'm Guardiola. laughing at Pete saying you've taken up crack and that just washing over both of us. <laughs> anyway, I, people accuse me of that all the time, Jimmy. You just get used to it. You've just got <laughs> to let me. I, I, it's usually during tournaments. I think. I think that. <laughs> Guardiola has said he'd like to manage an international team. It's not going to be Spain because he's Catalan, all that kind of stuff. He's mentioned that he wouldn't... Maybe there was links with him to Brazil, but he has said explicitly, yes, a national team is next. I'd love to, to, to lead a team into... And he said, the Euros, the World Cup, 
and or the, the Copper America, okay, which I love the fact that okay. he's, he specifically left the Brazilian door open there. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and the FA are obviously acutely aware of this, as is everybody. This is not new. This is not new. What's that, to... Pep? A cup in America? Yes. <laughs> Fine. Good. Yes, we'll take that. Yeah, right. Good. Sign on this line. So don't be surprised to see if, unless they get, I think if, if Howe's available I th- and, and they can do it, I think they will go for Howe. But if not, don't be surprised to see Lee Carsley take the Nations League yeah. campaign because Carsley could mm. be getting, could be England manager in the future. You know, he's impressed with the under twenty one, so why not give him a bit of the taste of the biscuit? <laughs> if he wins every game six 0 and they look like Brazil nineteen seventy, then maybe give him the job full time. But I think I think they're going to. Sorry, Pep. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> don't need you Carsley's anymore. Carsley's in the hot seat. <laughs> Pep knocking Carsley's on the window. Carsley's taking us to Glen. <laughs> <laughs> he's like some jilted lover. Oh no, Pep's. Pep's at the window again. Um, I'm so, so crappy. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I think that that's... It's madness. I think that, this is madness. Well, the, the, the Spanish gonna, press are reporting, mind. aren't they, that, that yeah. this, the offers have already been made. I mean, obviously, you know, you take... You know, I'll make an offer, can't we? But again, again, though, think about it from Pep's point of view. He, he, he fancies it. He could, he, he's won everything with Man City. Where does he go after Man City? There's no, there's no club, really. It, it's a mm. step down wherever mm. he goes, um, unless it would be... Um, to Real Madrid, and we know that ain't happening. So yeah. um, he wants to manage at international level. You have a squad which can challenge for major tournaments. If he wins the World Cup again, he's he's a legend forever in England, um, and it, 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 his name is in is in a select group of people. He's, he's immortalised, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that that's. I, I'm not saying he obviously I can't say he will, but it wouldn't surprise me if Lee Carsley does that Nations League campaign, yeah. and then they wait and see. And if not, Who's out there? then right. by March, maybe, I don't know, they, they pull the Graham Potter lever or even see how Carsley gets on. But that's what I think. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the yeah. job is going to hang over um, the Premier League for as long as it's filled by Lee Carsley, mm. I would imagine. But we'll, we'll <laughs> see how that... <laughs> no one's mentioned Sean Dyche, have they, Peter? <laughs> no, but they, England should be really good, like better with the messaging if indeed they are going to give Carsley it for a few months' time. Because it's like... You have to give. What's the point of him taking it? You know, his he has to think about his uh, natural progression. He could say no. I don't want to step up if it's a temporary job. I want to. I want it full time. Oh, I deserve I'd love it. that. I've won the Euros. I'd love that, Lee Carsley to win the Euros with the under twenty ones. Get offered the job and go fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a team that wins here. I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's basically what happened to Southgate. Yeah, he, true. He, he didn't want to take it, so um, mm. we've gone down that path before. So yeah, I mean, the only other one, of course, that was mentioned, but he's now in a job with Steve Cooper. I think some people thought maybe he might take it. Obviously, had great success. Uh, age cap level for England, but uh, he's now Leicester City manager, Jim Campbell. Good to see him. It is good to see him. Good to see him back in the Prem. I think, actually, he's stepping into a quite difficult situation straight away, actually, because um, Kelechi Iheanacho was left on a free. He didn't have a brilliant um, season last season, but they did want to keep him. They offered him a a new contract. Kieran Dewsbury Hall Mm. uh, has gone to Chelsea, as we know, uh, which who knows how prepared they were for that. And of course, they also potentially have a points deduction hanging over their heads. It's a difficult one, sort of coming up into the league and also losing players like that. It's a, it's a tough situation yeah. to ne- negotiate. But obviously, still he did very well at Forest, Vardy. so he, he does still have Jamie Vardy. So he's fine. Um, <laughs> he's basically doing a Martin O'Neill as well, managing both clubs. I mean, that's got to be a big, yeah. a bigger deal than we're probably giving it credit for. Yeah. Is that a, I mean, what you're talking, the 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 saw? you're talking about the rivalry? You're talking about the rivalry between Nottingham Forest and um, Leicester City. But you're you're referring to the rivalry, are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm referring to rivalry. What else would I be referring to? I, I have no idea, Peter. You accused me of being on crack <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Mark, I'd like to say for the record, Mark is not on crack. <laughs> yeah, a trick. It's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's actually quite a few, like, quite risky appointments, um, either coming up into the Premier League or players who are um, getting installed in the Championship. Um, Scott Parker, for example, like, he, he has got, quite a tricky sort of job on because like mm. they should be absolutely smashing this league they've they've got a lot of their players that they've had in the Premier League and they've spent over like 100 million Scott Parker should be playing some really nice stuff and getting 100 points this season give him a chance but he probably won't <laughs> right. be, you know, get, get 100 <laughs> points <laughs> <laughs> but he probably won't because he's Scott Parker and he well, doesn't play like that. I have that on the it's... dressing room wall. <laughs> <laughs> this little pleb from this podcast. <laughs> Brilliant. We can't Heart. get 100 Picture points. Picture of me. Scott Parker <laughs> coming out with his little grey number on with those three it's strikes. It's stressful. I'm, I'm just saying it's going to be very stressful for him. There's a lot of like quite risky jobs, I think. He... And Cooper's got one as well. Yeah. I, 
Scott Parker did get Fulham promoted from the championship <laughs> via the playoffs. I understand. That's not a stick to beat someone with. He got them promoted. All right. Better to did win. Did he have the... a better squad than Burnley? Ah, that's a good question. Actually, I mean, Fulham did have a, a squad that was. Was was primed for promotion that year, and mm. some people might have said actually he made a a slight meal of it going through the playoffs. I said yeah. I say well better win the playoffs than yum, finish yum. second. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> up, up yours because the result was the same. Um, yeah. He has got a big job, but he's done it before, and uh, I I'd like to see him do well because I do I do love that man. He's a, he's a, he's a he's a beautiful mm. boy, and he's not had the best of times recently in dugouts across yeah. Europe. So, when he got uh, sacked by Bournemouth for saying the squad was shit, basically. That wasn't yeah. great, was it? No. Mm. And, and and Bruges getting hammered by a Portuguese team. I can't remember the Whoever, whoever it was. Don't Europe, worry, Peter. Right? The, the, the result was the same. So it's a chance yeah. for him. It's a chance for him to refresh himself and for Burnley to get back in the Premier League to challenge the likes of Steve Cooper and Sean Dyche once again. With 101 points. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's have a quick break. In terms of results, Mick, one win in 17, it can't go on like this, can it? It can. <laughs> <laughs> That's the winning mentality we need. Oh, dude, I love it. Where's Mick? Where we, it's where a winning we mentality. A, a, an Irish journalist once said to me about Mick McCarthy, he'd bite your hand off for a one-all draw. I love that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Welcome back, like everybody, it. to the Football Ramble. Uh, thanks to friend of the Ramble, Hoff. For sending us that clip. You can become a friend of the Ramble too by heading over to patreon.com forward slash football ramble. You'll get access to the Discord where the banter doth fly. Uh, you can chat with us and other Ramble listeners as well. You can get ad free episodes of the Ramble up front and on the continent. Quite frankly, you'd be a bloody fool not to. Right. Um, speaking of bloody fools, it's transfer time, everybody. Pretty quiet transfer window so far in the old Premier League. Mm. Thought, I thought yeah. we were I thought we were a wealthy league in this country. Jim, what's going on? Hey, didn't take that bloody Labour government long, did it, to curtail everyone's spending? Yeah. <laughs> Crash the economy, I'd imagine, is probably what's happened. Now, I, I think there's been a bit, a bit of a jamboree on this summer, so it's, it's perhaps slowed everything down. Um, it has. It's been a most clubs fans appear to be complaining about their team not acting quickly enough in the transfer market apart from mm, right. Chelsea and Forest as far as I can tell which is a, you know is about usual because so both, have, both have signed a decent amount of players um, but yeah I think this, we expected this did we not for it to all be a bit um, to all be a bit quiet and then go a little bit supermarket sweep I think it's, it's kind of fun when it's truncated because it, it all starts moving really quickly suddenly I think this time round, you've obviously got um, a, a major tournament taking place, so that obviously slows things down when players aren't actually in the country. Used to speed things up, um, but you're right. Speed Nowadays, it yeah, does you're right. Yeah, get aside. Um, and also, you obviously had the um, PSR um, mm-hmm. rules that had to be satisfied uh, at mm-hmm. the end of June, I think it was. So everybody was absolutely panicking. It's like, it's like doing your tax return, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And so I think they're probably just recovering from that and basically taking stock and sort of going right. How much money have you got to spend? Yeah. And this is where the real transfers will start to yeah. happen. But the ones before June were just a, a bit of a joke. I don't know if you've <laughs> seen this, but um, Arsenal, and I thought this was made up at first, but it does look like there is some truth to it. Arsenal are trying to sign Daniel Bentley um, to be a backup goalkeeper from Wolves. And that, apparently they bid 50 grand. Love that. 50 yeah. grand. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, some. I mean, the, the Premier League did basically say that uh, a lot of these transfers this window, because of the FSR and fair play stu- rules, um, they will be um, uh, looked at to see if they are the market value right. for whatever player. And I know, like, mm. you know, if, if I think something's worth something and you think something's worth something, I mean, who's to say what a player is worth? They're all inflated to a certain yeah. degree. But um, I would say they should be looking at that. And I'm not saying that it, clearly that would be going against anyone's interest to sell yeah. a player for too little. But 50 grand seems particularly you could bloody not. buy. I'm Peter. Yeah, should, we get. We should all chip in. We should all club together. Yeah, we should all club together, and basically, we'll have a professional goalkeeper on our hands, and then, <laughs> then we can loan him out to teams, and we can cash in. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. Maybe it's the new definitely. property ladder. Maybe that's what rich people will do. They won't buy property and then and then rent out. They buy footballers. Yeah. Kevin McLeod will be reviewing footballers. To be fair, this sort it. of you know. This is kind already of exists. Has happened, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. there is there is nothing you can invent that football hasn't tried to monetize. Yeah, I, I rem- yeah indeed. Yeah, I remember learning that um, a previous record-breaking uh, transfer 
um, of a very, very famous striker in this country. That's pretty mm. much what happened, apparently. Uh, but there we are. Right. Um, well, uh, uh, Manchester United um, uh, are, are always involved when, when a transfer window is open. They've already signed the Dutch forward Joshua uh, Jerksy and 18-year-old Lille centre-half uh, Lenny Euro for £50 million. Pounds. I I worry for, for Lenny. He's a young player. It needs to be developed. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not the club to do it, is it, Jim? Well, <laughs> it, previous iterations, or, you know, recently previous iterations, you'd probably say no. And it is a big fear, isn't it? He was, you know, he was reportedly coveted by a lot of teams. Apparently he wanted to go to Real Madrid. Um, but they obviously have spent quite a bit of money this summer already. So they were, I think, mm. hoping to get him on a free next season. But I read that... Um, Lille basically said to him, look, you you won't play if you don't go now. Um, so he's, he's got the move to Man United. It is a lot of money. But t- to be fair, they do have a lot of money to slosh around, don't they? Because they are an absolute like money-generating machine. So they really wanted to get him. He's obviously a, like, a player that's earmarked for a big, big future. And he, he's played a lot already. He's come off the back of a very, very good season. So people are wondering if he's ready to go into the first team. But there's every chance that he is. They were, say, and, they were saying that again uh, about the England midfielder that we, that we enjoyed watching in the summer. So That's true. Yeah, yeah, I'm forgetting old Cobby, am I not? Aren't I? They're, uh, they're an interesting um, proposition at the moment, aren't they, Man United? Because mm. we all expected Ten Hag to go. But actually, he's had this, this real... Quite impressive backing from the board. There's a lot in place now. They're they're, they're making big moves. They're being proactive. So I we said this is our last season. Yeah, we'll it, it, it's and we'll not, not the first time we've said it, is it? <laughs> it, it, it? It may not be the last, but I think it's an, an interesting place to go at the moment. And I think Xerxes got a, a really interesting profile as well. He's he's never been prolific, but he's six four. I think he's very yeah. very mobile with that as well. And I, I think there might be a real player in there. He's very very young. I think it's it's easy to kind of um, think that if a player isn't smashing in sort of Erling yeah. Haaland style numbers. For from the age of 18, then they're, they're never going to be a sort of top player. But that's obviously a, mm. a bit of a distortion from, from a few players. And he certainly has a profile to be absolutely devastating. No, I know what you mean. You, you sort of think he scored 18 in, in 34 last season. You think, eh, is that that good? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. That's really good. Okay, <laughs> Ronaldo, Messi and, and Haaland, they've, they've just completely skewed it all. But you're right, he's a big, he's a big forward, um, uh, a big Dutch forward, uh, played in, uh, for Bologna last year. Uh, he, I mean, he did play at Bayern Munich a, a, a few years ago, but I just a big Dutch forward, six foot four. I'm thinking, is he the new Wout Weghorst? <laughs> you know, that's all I'm <laughs> thinking. Go, Do we need a new Wout Weghorst? I don't know. Scott Parker might no. be able to tell you. Uh, I've big worn news. out the old one, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Uh, big <laughs> news though um, uh, concerning Manchester United is Jaden Sancho uh, and Te- Eric Ten Hag have apparently cleared the air. This is what I mean. Mm, yeah. Good times are back. I think we're being harsh on Ten Hag. I'm saying that, that young players aren't going to be developed there. Well, well, you know, as you say, Kobe Main, who has it, maybe the, 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 the young lad Euro is going to be okay. Um, well, you, and you've got Hoyland started to sort of show signs of promise as well, and Garnacho there. There's Garnacho. a lot to be excited about, I think. I, I, exactly, yeah. I mean, uh, Andy um, and, and Luke were both saying, though, that it wouldn't be a shock if. Uh, with Ten Hag winning the FA Cup and all that kind of stuff, the new owners, they, they, they get their feet under the desk. And mm. in a few months' time, if he's Ball not... Guy. Yeah, it yeah. could be. It yeah. really, really could work out like that. I mean, I know what you mean when they say they've signed these players. They're not huge names. I mean, you're for 50 million, OK, but Premier League clubs have a lot of money, so they're always going to be inflated deals. Um, if he's an 18-year-old and he's and he's got potential, he'll have potential under Ten Hag or whoever the next guy may be. So it wouldn't shock me if, you know, Ten Hag get sacked I mean Teddy Sheringham was saying he might only last two weeks if he if he has three poor results in a row and I think well okay Teddy I don't think it would be that knee jerky but you get the picture um, Manchester United though, they did lose a pre-season friendly to um, to Rosenberg recently 1-0 which was quite enjoyable and I thought to myself yeah. in all this crazy Euro stuff and the highs and lows of England it's nice to see that, that some things don't change too much you know you've got yeah. we, we, mm. we can rely on that a- annoyingly Rosenberg are like halfway through their domestic season so yeah. why they're playing a friendly with Man United I don't know but they are like very much up to speed so that's perhaps well, less keep, embarrassing than it looks keep the confidence up Jim maybe that's why they're yeah exactly it. Um, Manchester United did play Rangers in a friendly um, recently did you see that uh, Man United TV's official coverage of the match uh, they were doing some interviews with fans outside the ground and then there was a, there was a fan who who's wearing their, th- their their thus far unreleased third kit 
the new third <laughs> kit. And so they cut away quickly when he was being interviewed. Football clubs are funny with this sort of thing. Because, like, to me, it's kind of like, oh, shit, where, where did that guy get that kit? That's quite interesting. But that, no, 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 we need to do the official presentation, yeah. which will last half an hour and waste everybody's time. It's like, let that guy have his moment. <laughs> well, I, th- I think probably he, he it probably, I'm, I'm imagining on the it. balance of probability. <laughs> no, he probably got it from somewhere uh, in the Far East. Yeah. But, like, because these people just, like, just get pictures online and just, you know, get the shirt into Photoshop and just and just bash out copies mm. uh, left, right, and centre. You, you got to strike while the iron's hot. Okay. And it is an iron, because you've got iron the names on it. That's true. Um, I, thought the, I thought the presenter who cut away from the man wearing the illegal kit um, was very good. Uh, I have yeah. to give give uh, presenter props. Yeah, did not they, break uh, stride, did she? No, exactly. No. no, it wasn't. Remember when, was it Man United TV where somebody... Gary Palace's um, cock? That's right, yes. Yeah, that that was my <laughs> other favourite. Uh, but less smooth in that, in that, that case was, um, when somebody... Uh, I don't remember this. Hayley McQueen. It was Hayley McQueen, McQueen. was it? Hayley McQueen was the host, um, and it was... I can't remember who was with Gary, uh, Gary Pallister on the uh, It might have been just the two of them, maybe. No, I think it, was, it would have been more intense if, if otherwise. <laughs> it, I, think there was, I think it was three of them there, and, um, and they basically... Uh, Still the potential they, for intensity, to be fair. They, they managed to get... They managed to get um, they managed to get. A, a, they were just taking calls from uh, from punters, um, and uh, one of them just rang up and went, um, "I'd like to say, Gary, you look like you've got a big cock." And it was just. Yeah, but the thing is, and Haley McQueen went, "Oh no!" <laughs> she, but it was funny though because oh. she she sort of said, "Oh well, I'm sure." I can't remember exactly what you said, but it was basically words to the effect of, oh, well, I'm sure he's a grower, sure not a jealous. shower kind of thing. Do you know, like, you're just jealous. Or no, whatever. no, I think, I, think, I think she said, uh, oh, I'm sure you're just jealous. Uh, and then just cut to something else. And that was, yeah. I think, at the start of Hayley McQueen's career. Right. Uh, she's obviously a lot better now, but it was a proper, like, guy gomer. Ah, 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 somebody just said cock. <laughs> yeah, I, thought she, I thought she reacted quite well. Well. Uh, and then Gary Pallister did uh, Man United TV nights after that. It was like their version did, of Station, yeah. which mm. uh, went, went down like a storm. Terry Wogan in it. <laughs> Lovely reference. Lovely mm. reference. Uh, well, let's go um, to the blue half of Manchester, where possibly Kevin De Bruyne and Edison um, might be going to Saudi Arabia. Because yeah. the Saudi Edison. transfer window opened last Thursday. Now... Depending on what you read, Kevin De Bruyne has reportedly uh, agreed personal terms to join Al Etihad after he admitted um, he had to think about the incredible amount of money on offer. I mean, I know, it's just blatant now, isn't it? Yeah. As I, yeah. As I said, it's like Eddie Murphy Fair doing Beverly Hills Cop 3. They get to yeah. the point where they just write you a check after you're saying this script is terrible and you kind of go, yeah, fine, let's just do the film. I don't care. <laughs> um, Apparently, Kevin De Bruyne is on 400 grand a week now. It's not enough, Jim. It's not enough. No. Uh, how, uh, Jim, right, mm. just... Think about that, Jim. How much will be left after tax, okay? And you're going to say an awful lot of money. Yeah. I understand that. But can that really, really um, keep him and his family safe <laughs> through the it next probably, decade? No, but it <laughs> probably will be the same amount of money, but they just don't penny tax yeah, out maybe there. That's so what it's absolutely is. fine. Maybe know. one of them has a crippling Fabergé egg addiction. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I've got a, so sad all the time. A Fabergé egg a day um, keeps the Saudis away. Well, uh, Fabrizio Romano, him... Uh, for what it's worth, has said a deal hasn't been agreed, though, and that the club are focused on getting Musa Diaby in. So that basically means tomorrow mm. or, or or Wednesday, um, De Bruyne will sign the deal. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, mm. I mean, that's mad, though, isn't it? Like, you think about the type of player De Bruyne is and how um, annoyed he can sometimes get, right, w- mm. with his play. You think about the type of football he plays. Now, I know he, he'll skin defenders or midfielders there and just stuff them in the top corner fine, but he's used to looking up and seeing Erling Haaland <laughs> going, right, just put it in that, that gap. Or he looking, might see him. Oh, come on. <laughs> he's, used to, he's used to a certain type of player in a certain type. Of, I, I, hey, all I'm you, saying, Kevin, is you, you, just, you won't be happy professionally if you go there. You just <laughs> can't be. Marcus, he'll be, not he'll happy be now. banging them in from distance for fun, surely. I just <laughs> he, he doesn't need Haaland because he'll get a clear shot at goal yeah, very often and he's excellent the, uh, at that. The only person we know is having a lovely old time. The only two people we know are having a good time there. Cristiano Ronaldo, because 
you know, he can. Still he's not having the... a good time anywhere. Yeah, true, true. Okay, he's so, one of the most unhappy men in the world. You're right. <laughs> Bollocks to him. The only bloke who's clearly having a good time there is Alexander Mitrovic, because Mitrovic is just a big bustling forward, loves to get on the end of crosses, all that good stuff. He could do that anyway. He could do that any league yeah. in the world. He's going to get the balls. Yeah, he's going to get a yeah. lot of high crosses in because that's you know the job lot exactly. <laughs> Whereas Kevin De Bruyne, it just there's absolutely. I know we talk about the morals of moving someone like Saudi and all that kind of stuff and the sports washing and blah 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 blah. But I just I I just look at that and I think, okay, you've got the money, but surely you'll get so pissed off. Like you'll just be like, what is this crap that I'm playing with? The t- again, specifically the type of player he is. I I, I don't get Well it. I think a, a lot of players when they reach that point in their career essentially decide that to prolong it, maybe you go to a to a, yeah. a less taxing level. I mean there's obviously finances are as he's openly admitted pretty much that's the um, reason a, a factor yeah but um, that's possibly a mitigating circumstance as well i find it interesting that um he's 33, city Jim. city are being it's, yeah well I, I find it interesting that city are being targeted in particular it feels like are they just trying to get one over on abu dhabi <laughs> like we we all know that it will take an enormous amount of money for Oasis to get back together. But there is an amount. There is yeah. an amount where they'll do it. Yeah. That'd, be, price. that'd be funny, right? Uh, uh, fair. So what do you think? Do you think the Saudis think are our the best Saudis bet? are going to try and get I might Oasis have to go, back I'm not going to have to go to That's Riyadh to go and watch Oasis. Is that what you're you saying? You might do, yeah. Do you know what? I'll do it. I'll blood it back. When all I need are cigarettes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. well, yeah, might not be the best playlist, but I'm up for it. Mm. Of course, I mentioned Edison there. Edison reportedly been offered £900,000 a week um, by uh, Al Nasser, who Cristiano Ronaldo pays, plays for. You just said there, everyone has their price. Yeah, <laughs> that's my price. I'll tell you yeah. that right now. <laughs> 900 grand. 900 grand a week. I don't think we, we're losing you anytime soon then, mate. <laughs> it's encouraging, actually. That's true, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, Jim, let's move on to Arsenal. Um, mm. They're close to uh, getting uh, Ricardo Calafiori, by the looks yeah. of it. Really Talented surprising man. link when it first emerged, um, mm. because mm. Arsenal seemed pretty well stocked with defenders, and the, the more pressing areas of concern are obviously in, in, in the midfield and, and up front, um, with a striker and possibly a winger needed as well. Um, but I... I really really like it because he's he definitely improves Arsenal if he takes the spot of um of Jakub Kivio um and is is competing for both the left back and and left center back then I think that that means a really really deep defensive line with six players who can essentially interchange in a lot of different positions with very little dropping quality as long as of course Calafiori turns out to be good and Julian Timber is the player that we all hope he is which are two kind of two ifs definite capital I ifs but uh, in theory it looks great I also am thrilled to be signing an Italian defender just mm-hmm. just in general certainly as a, like <laughs> as a kid of the 90s I feel like if you were building a team based on profiles of players rather than names <laughs> you'd have an yeah. Italian defender you'd probably have a German defender as well you want a Brazilian winger and etc 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 to me this is not Calafiori this is Maldini this is Baresi <laughs> this is Nesta this is so exciting mm. <laughs> He, well, I mean, th- having said all that, Jim, he, he did say that John Stones was one of his inspirations and he's, he's, that his playing style has been uh, l- likened to the, the Barnsley Beckenbauer. Yeah, he, he likes a little day trip, doesn't he? Into, um, Into areas of the pitch he doesn't live in. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it'd be a good signing. And, and I think for, uh, you know, we, we think it's going to go ahead. That's what all the rumours are, are, are suggesting. I mean, it'd be, it'd be quite something. Although, I mean, Bologna did have a great season last yeah. year. I mean, they, they're, in, they're going to be in the Champions League. So um, I know people might think, you know, from Bologna to Arsenal, that's quite elite. But this iteration of Bologna has, has been very, very impressive. Um, there, there is a little bit of drama, though, as his girlfriend posted a message saying that they had broken up um, ahead of his move, proposed move to Arsenal. However, she's now threatening to take legal action after clarifying that the message was a hoax. <laughs> Jim Campbell, have Arsenal got their own Wanda and Mauro Icardi well, coming to it, town? As it sounds like a hoax, possibly not, um, which is in one way mm. very disappointing, uh, in another way probably for mm. the best from where I'm sat. Although, I mean, <laughs> someone's going to have to step up into the Wanda and, and Mauro void because we've got some devastating news today, don't we? Mm, yeah, they're, they're officially divorcing, although, you know, 
Don't sl- when it, whenever let, let's see you have goes. a friend who has quite a turbulent relationship, um, I think it's important mm. never to slag off the other partner because uh, they invariably get back together. So let's keep our powder dry about our feelings about these two lovers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> we'll, I'm sure we'll see that fire burning bright once more on the uh, on, the, on yeah. the banks of a river, yeah. like their um, furniture that time. <laughs> hey, look, a, ma- a man's a man's lost his wife. You know, as we always say, a man's lost his job <laughs> yeah. when he gets sacked. I Don't do, I do like that somebody's writing, um, like, sort of fan fiction from the yeah. point of view of um, a footballer's um, partner, though. It's so creepy. Like, that's a sort, well, that's a sort mm. of transfer deadline day I can get behind. Sort of give me the dildo in the ear. Give me the dildo in the heart. Give me the... Careful. Give me the, oh, right. Give me the give, pull on my heartstrings. I want to know that there's, a, there's an emotional bit of turmoil yeah. in someone uh, joining a club. A dildo to the heart. A dildo to the heart. Bloody Nora right, Pete. and Gordon right, Pete Bennett Donaldson. both made an appearance there. <laughs> so you know, if your giddy aunt had turned up, we'd have had the Marcus Speller hat trick. <laughs> I, I, I perish the thought, Jim. I perish the thought. Uh, before we uh, move on our chat, um, Arsenal could, could be parting ways with uh, Emil Smith-Rowe this summer. He's been courted by uh, Fulham and Crystal Palace, who are apparently uh, stepping up there. Uh, uh, efforts to get him uh, would you be sad to see him go Jim? I would be sad to see him go um, this is complicated by reports saying mm. that Mikel Arteta actually wants to keep him which does mm. seem strange he's lied before though hasn't he, he has lied before like this, yeah. <laughs> rotating goalkeepers everyone, everyone should do it um, <laughs> but... rotate them uh, 180 degrees <laughs> <laughs> but I think you know if it seems an odd tactic because Fulham and Palace uh, have both made bids, apparently, mm. and there's, there's talk of West Ham being interested as well. So I think if you're trying to, I don't know if it helps to drive the price up if you claim you want to keep the player. I don't know. Perhaps it does, or perhaps he thinks actually with what's available in the market, because you know things cost players cost an extortionate amount of money now. Maybe mm. thinking actually. I want to have another crack at you know getting back to what we could get out of Smith Rowe. So I'm I'm really not sure how this one's going to go. My my gut feeling is that he will leave eventually, and I think it's probably the right thing for the player because he he just hasn't really been able to force him his way back into contention. Um, he's had a lot of injuries, but fewer than you might think in terms of how many matches he's been available for. And Arteta spoke about wanting to change his position and make him sort of the the kind of what we call the left eight now and work on his kind of defensive abilities as well to, to so that you know to, to keep that kind of hard pressing style up. And it it hasn't quite clicked for him. He he, he started against Luton, played very well in that game earlier in the season, and he yeah, he just hasn't seemed to be able to refine a place in the team. So no, well, he, and, and also the, the the positions where he would really like to play, it, uh, you know, along that three behind the striker, they're they're very much filled at the moment with with real quality and young players as well. So it's not like he's waiting for somebody to move mm, on. I, I mean, think... he only had thirteen Premier League appearances last season. Most of them weren't stars. They they really have and to he's... be a bit more realistic with the pricing, I think, because the, these teams could mm. just move on. Because like, Ars- uh, although Arsenal aren't the sort of club where you can just sort of not amble around but like find fitness and form on the field you kind of have to move into the side at their levels who are you know challenge for the title every year you need to be ring ready effectively and, yeah and I'd, I'd actually I'd, I'd move him on for a more reasonable amount but then get the amount of games you know after 20 games you know give us this amount of money to be to honest more sensible. I think that they're asking for about 35 million which I think for a player with the ceiling that we all expect him to have right. is reasonable he's 21 um, isn't he 21, he's, 21? He's, he's older 23. than that he's 23, 23 yeah. um but I think when you, it's a very sort of inflated market at the moment. And obviously, mm. Arsenal have an issue where they're perceived as being weak sellers. So I think it's in their interests to try and get as much money for him as possible because they need to change that reputation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I full of need to sign somebody, I'll tell you that. Lads. Yeah. Obviously, Joao Polina finally um, went to buy and Adder Abayo um, as well. Ad, ad, yeah, Tossin's moved on to Chelsea on, on a free. They've been linked to Scott McTominay for a while, but that's not kind of happening I would love that um, and I'd love them to get Smith Rowe as well but it's looking like it might be Palace more but there we are everybody we shall see uh, I don't think um, I wouldn't call it a saga yet but you never know mm. you're only just a few headlines away from a saga let's be <laughs> honest um, an enormous saga that uh, that, that was um, bubbling away for, for, for ages one could say was killing Mbappe going to Real Madrid of course it happened and he's been unveiled in front of 80,000 fans uh, at the Bernabeu uh, last week. He kissed the badge. Apparently his mother broke down in tears as, uh, as as Mbappe took to the field. Andrea Bocelli teed up the walkout as well. The 15 Champions League trophies were also put on the pitch. 
They went all out. They did. They went absolutely. They were basically slapped their big old Madrid <laughs> Madridist knob on the flipping pitch and just went get a load of that yeah. everybody but ffp no no, no chance you nothing you can't stop you can't stamp on the badge as you run at the field but <laughs> no. you, can, you can certainly fall over the 15 champions league trophies <laughs> that scattered around it, it, yeah. it what an incredible display of power <laughs> it is it is it was, old money as you say swinging oh, its toddler yeah. around it it, is. we got we got a pot to piss in 15 in fact yeah it's a, it's a proper it's a it's a proper dictator Roll the tanks out. Yeah. Come on, let's show them all what we got. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is. You, you, you are right to say that they, they, they try and find new ways to make money. I mean, they are planning to build 300 super VIP seats in the Bernabeu because Bernabeu's had a, a, they've done, they've done a bit of renovating. Right. They've, uh, they've, they've been sprucing the place up a bit. Another and, cozy and, little uh, agreement uh, with, the, uh, <laughs> with the council. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dearie me! Yeah, the, <laughs> the, <laughs> so the three hundred super VIP or the SVIP seats, as I'm going to call them, uh, have an have an entry fee of two hundred and ten thousand pounds. That's just that's just to sign up, right? Then you've got an annual fee on top of that. Yeah. But one of the so all the plus points. This is it's in it's in the first little amphitheater apparently in the Bernabeu, which. The mind boggles. Mm. Uh, great view of the pitch, a better view than the players have got. Uh, yeah, the, the reports the say players. Which, I, 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 which players, Jim? I don't <laughs> you know. Don't but I, 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 <laughs> I would say, I would say that like, is this little box in the centre circle. <laughs> imagine, imagine the quality of people. They'll be like you know the people oh, who Pete. are the oligarchs yeah. of the world, and you know, you know tossers. Chinese dignitaries and stuff tossers. like that. But then you'll have, but then you'll have. The people who are there on a bit of a borrow, and it'll be like, I yeah. show speed and people yeah, like that. And, you'll be like, first and they'll be chattering on while you're trying yeah. to watch the football match. Oh, well, what, what, yeah, one of the one of the sort of um, selling points, if you like, is, is 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 and I quote: "Members will be able to mingle with other millionaires and get their own car park." <laughs> is that Which that much is one of a selling car park point? For them all. Yeah. Surely, at some point, you have to go on a public road, so like you're just as well sort of versed yeah. as, as using the other car. Mate, with a with a burnabout, genuinely, who knows? <laughs> There's no danger of them mingling with the general public, so they're going to mingle with other millionaires. There's going to be a lot of people swapping cards and ideas. Mm. And, There's a club uh, in and, there, and, isn't there now? Business opportunities, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that's in the burnabout. There is there is there is a club, yeah. Like crystals. Uh, do they have a swimming pool? Do they have a swimming pool? No, I did not see not, any reports not, of that. Then, then you know that's one nil to Fulham. So we are. <laughs> is that open yet? Is that whole kind of little tub? Yeah, how's that going? Available for not, for, for hire? Not yet. Not right. yet. The reason why I assume that is is because I haven't been invited. Yeah. Right. Well, Surely, then there's no there's way. Any, it's not open. the old pelt. <laughs> no one needs to fuck up the fuck up the drainage <laughs> on the fir- on the first one. Sorry, it's close uh, to the rest of the season because Marcus's hair is in the plug hole. Disgusting. Yeah, I, need gui- I need to be the guinea pig, surely. <laughs> I need to be the one to check this out. That's what you sure left in the zinc. Everything. A guinea pig. Come on. Come on. That'll do. Uh, right, uh, let's crack? finish this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you smoking crack in the in the pool? Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, you don't get this at the very <laughs> 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 Oh, Shouting about Europa League run. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, where were you when we were shit? <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Uh, uh, neither was I. Right. Uh, <laughs> let's finish this bloody thing. Let's get over here. Um, by going to Brazil. Oh, yes. Gentlemen, we have to go to Brazil. Um, my goodness, of course, club football is being played in Brazil right now. Uh, Flamengo were involved in, in being awarded a, a bizarre penalty. Mm. Uh, we've not seen penalties given for this reason uh, because we've never seen this scenario really play out before, I don't think. They were drawing one all um, uh, and there was only just moments left. And a, a, an extra ball was thrown on the pitch. Now, we know this is um, a bit of a a bit of a so-and-so's trick mm. for uh, wasting time mm-hmm. because two balls on the pitch, you, you know, more often than not, the game is stopped. Although referees are quite wise to that, so clearly, if the ball's not interfering with play, then um, th- then then somebody can just get rid of it. But if you haven't seen the footage of this, it's incredible. An extra ball is thrown onto the pitch, and and it, and it and it gets into the box, the, uh, which Flamengo are attacking, and the Flamengo player has the ball and and is bearing down. Well, there's there's a bit of a there's a number of defenders in the box. He could probably get a shot but, off. 
But yeah, there's a chance. There's a goal-scoring opportunity potentially about to happen. And one of the defenders just passes the ball into the ball as he's about to shoot, (laughs) thus, you know, completely breaking the whole move down. Wonderful. (laughs) Wonderful. I'm really clever here. I've I've gamed the system. Uh, This is the perfect crime. Mm. Well, of course, it's not the perfect crime because, as the law states um, in in football, a direct free kick is awarded if a player throws uh, an object at the ball, an opponent or a match official, or makes contact with the ball with a head held object and obviously you can say penalty I love the fact that you can if you throw um, an opponent or a match official at the ball that's still good <laughs> we, have, we haven't seen that yet no. um, but, uh, but, but obviously the player threw an object at the ball the object being another football mm. so a penalty was given so actually there was nothing controversial about this yeah. at all it would have been controversial if the penalty hadn't been given but because it's a decision or a passage of play that we've not seen play out before no. it was absolutely yeah. extraordinary and the defender who thought he'd got away with it was just a bit like well how can you give a penalty for that it's like well look at the laws of the yeah. game you look did. at what you just did did. Like how did he? <laughs> how did he expect to get away with naughty, it? Naughty, wasn't it? It was clearly naughty. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say like, but the, but the referee must must have been briefed because these things must happen all the time because the referees are briefed to sort of to know that mm. rule because it's quite a niche. That's probably not a rule that yeah. they sort of think about a lot. I mean, but I'm it is thinking in the laws. The beach boy, the beach ball uh, going up the pitch. Mm. You know what I mean? They must be like in his head. He must be just thinking scenes like that. Yeah. That well, you know, if if the a, beach ball though, I mean, you, you're referencing Sunderland, was it against Liverpool? Yeah, it was. It was definitely at the Darren stadium of light. Yes, but that was that wasn't that wasn't um, there was no involvement with the opposing player. The opposing yeah, player I mean, didn't it, kick the beach ball into the ball to make yeah. the ball do the also, ball. Also, yes. the um, the ball hit the beach ball, didn't it? Not the yeah. other way around. Yeah. So it's yeah, so so the, it was ball the ball's fault. Got a, or was the ball's fault? So the beach ball should have got a penalty. <laughs> the, the goal shouldn't have been given. We're all we're all glad it did. Yeah. All right. We're all glad it. Even Peter's a Newcastle fan was glad that one went in, <laughs> but it shouldn't have been given. But this is a totally different thing. And as I say, the law is the law. And justice was done, mm. uh, but I just love the fact that the defender thought, "Oh, brilliant! <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can absolutely mug this guy off, and nothing will happen to me." This yeah. is just like you knobhead. I feel like a second ball coming onto the pitch like never used to happen, no. and now it happens all the time. Yeah, well. I guess we got like the multi-ball system now. Maybe that explains it. But I, what, yeah, what but is with this scourge of second balls? Yeah, well, I mean, again, it's just trying to sort of game the system, isn't it? Because you, you, what you're going to do, send a ball boy off I mean yes that's I think that happened once maybe didn't it mm. but like, who, who cares but obviously people are wise to it it's like scuffing this penalty spot just people finding different <laughs> yeah, ways yeah. for these sorts of things everyone gets wise to it ah, okay 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 so if you haven't seen that footage um, then please uh, do check it out and of course Flamengo did score the penalty in case you're wondering Good. and they won the game nice. so hurrah for that hurrah uh, for that. You're watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. A single upload. <laughs> don't miss out on the uploads. The uploads are important. <laughs>